Hi gang, this is Elizabeth, Dandy Soap Channel. And today's DIY, out of special request, I received a new subscriber, and she is like me. She loves the campers. And since I was able to pick these up at Michael's during their 50% off sale, I was actually able to get this little camper with the tree for a buck. And this one actually had a tree on it. It also has a light. And the tree that was on it, I cut off. And I got this one for like a buck and a half. I also had a coupon that day. So the tree was on here. And I actually took my hacksaw or jigsaw from Dollar Tree and cut these off. And then, of course, this little block that was kind of a piece that holds them was there. And it just popped right out. And so I took my sanding sponge and I sanded that to smooth it off. So when you're looking at it, you do not even notice that there was a backside that's gone. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to paint these. And I am going to do one, of course, in a Christmas theme. And this is going to be a gift to, like, one of my best buds. She has a camper. And then this one I will probably keep for myself, um, just as a decoration. And it has the hitch on it. So I have in front of me some paints based on things of my theme in my home and one is the vintage teal this is what i do a lot of my campers in and i also use the buffalo check this one is lagoon and this one is the rustic red this is a beautiful color i also have my silver paint marker my red paint marker and my black paint marker this will give me more control and precision when I get to these areas that are really, really small. So I also brought along my number six and my number eight chisel flat brush. These have a sharp chisel on them. And when you're working on a piece like this, you can really get there and not worry about getting paint on everything else. So, of course, I will be using the paints that I tell you as I go along, but they are only what I choose to use. They are in no way requirement for you to go out and purchase that particular paint or that particular brand. You go by what is your theme, what colors you like, or even if you love a, your own camper and you want to mark it up like your own camper, that is the coolest. Um, it's sort of like having a miniature dollhouse that looks like your home. It's just the coolest. So based on the color that I like and the theme of my home is what I'm going to paint them as. The advantage of having wood things like this is you can change their paint the same as you would buying a new camper or buying a new home anytime. So like I said, I will be using the colors and hopefully you'll pick up a thing or two and, and become more comfortable and try one of these on for yourself and just see how I fare and maybe you will decide to do the same. It'll kind of give you, you know, some might pick up a few things from what I do and learn what we can and can't do with these little things. So for the time being, let me get everything cleared off here and let's get started. All righty. Now this one is really, really small, okay? So I'll tell you what I do just to kind of help. I am planning on painting this and the door in this area across here in that line red so i brought along my red paint marker and to try and help me have some kind of guide i'm going to take this card and lay it there now you can take some masking tape or some painter's tape and that will help you too but when you get somewhere like right here you're going to have to decide are you going to go above or below and since i am going to stay below and that right there is natural occurrence that the wood from that liquid is going to dry, is going to go downward in the wood. So just don't panic. Just stay with it. On these, the way that they're cut, and so like I said, you just have to kind of give yourself a line and decide how far are we going to go and just go with it the best you know how. Once again, up here, I'm kind of draw myself a line. And I'm just going to use that little V 
to help me. And then, as you can see with the paint markers, they go really fast and they do really good. So, staying again in line with that, and they'll just help me. And that card just be my guide. And once again, and as you notice, I'm laying my pen this away so that I can make sure that I stay downward with it. And I'm just touching it. And then see, just that quick, we've already done that. So now I'm going to fare at the door with the paint marker. And once again, just going to that crevice that's already laser cut in the wood to represent the door. And then whenever your, whoops, better hold the door. Whenever your liquid starts running out of your pen, you just press it down. The chisel will go up inside of the pen and that allows the paint to flood that tip. And the good thing about that door moving like that is we can actually raise it up a little bit and keep us from getting over there on the piece we don't want painted. Now that red is really bright, but as you notice as this is drying, how it deepens. And so this color, by all intended purposes, most of us are very used to red markers. And it's we're expecting it to be that blood bright red and uh, stay that way, but it will actually deepen as the color begins to dry and set in. So I've already finished that little bit right there. Now, uh, basically, you would think, okay, now it's time for the white. So let's see how the white goes. And then this fender well right here, I may actually do it red, simply so it will match the little stripe on my camper. So let's see how well we do with the white. And my white has been used and used and used. So as you can see, I'm just pressing it down and trying to allow that tip to get flooded by the paint. And it has a ball in it. You hear the ball? And so sometimes it will take it a few minutes to start coming down. And there you go. It's already coming through. But with the white where I've used it so much, I do try to make sure that I'm actually getting a good amount of white. And I may just have to get a new one and open it just to get enough paint. And yes, it's going to make that sound because we really need that tip to be good and flooded. And where it's running out of paint... So let's see how much more we can get out. We'll probably empty this one and then go to a new one. So I'm getting a little bit more there. And with it running low, you're probably going to have to stop more often just to flood the, the chisel again. And that white is brighter than you think. It is probably showing up really good for y'all watching it on video. And sometimes I fast forward through some of this where I'm base coating the paints. And see that little bit of red? That's all it takes. But if you're patient, you can put enough on there to get it covered up. And you may have to let it dry and then go back over it. It's just where it's bled down into the wood. So I'll do it last and go over here and do this side just so I can get my white painted and not worry about getting into the red. Let me hit this area. Try to go back over that. And these are oil-based, these particular markers that I have. You can actually get the paint markers that are water-based. And right there where that... It's trying to creep up the grain. I'm just going to hit it one more time. And I, may act <clears throat> and I may actually have to hit this again just to camouflage that red wanting to run down into the grain of the wood. So let's move on and see what happens. 
Now, we do have that little piece, but as you can see how the red reacts, I'm going to wait. And so let's just go ahead and worry about the tire. And it's going to take off too, so I'm going to try to lay it down. Now, if you get over on this, don't sweat it because you still have the beauty ring and the center to do. And if you're paying attention, we can kind of figure them out. And so you just may have to let it dry a moment and then go back and fix it. Now, up here in this top, I have a yellow. So let's see if we can... Hit the star with the yellow. And it looks like this little tiny thing is actually going to be done mostly with paint markers. And I will tell you this too. This right here is like a snow built up. And so I do not have a green paint marker. But I do have these. I do have these markers that come in the little kids ornament packs and let's just out of curiosity see what color green this yields us if it yields the green that we need then this just might be the answer and so sometimes the little kids um stuff that you get like this actually came out of their thanksgiving and i had done a yo-yo a wooden yo-yo that I got from AC Moore for a dollar. And it's so tiny, guys, it sits in the palm of my hand. And I did it on the camera and posted it on the YouTube channel there just to simply see how kid-friendly that yo-yo would be. Because the, you see how tiny these markers are. The yo-yo is extremely little. And it for, was for ages three and up. And I thought to myself, okay, I don't know how much attention span you're going to be able to get out of a three-year-old. And someone who's old enough to really have that much control and be that creative and keep their attention span for longer than three minutes may not even be interested in such a toy. Uh, may not have an interest to hand paint with markers on something like that by then they're probably pretty advanced so sometimes you might have a a really creative soul who will just take on anything just to have something to do with their hands and it would be suitable but otherwise even i was struggling trying to paint that little tiny yo-yo and uh so just it it was just really to see you know a product review to see how well it would go for some, a little one to try and do a yo-yo. Okay, so we got to figure out something here for the tree trunk. And this may be a case where you could just use a black paint marker and be done with that part. So we've done pretty good with that so far. And not really sure what these are to represent because as you can see, there are holes in there for the lights so i haven't ever figured out what in that's got to be like the tie downs i would say for your tree um that's what i would think is this would tie around it and those would be your tie down those little chunks of wood that are circles there that's the only thing that my mind could think is that's what that's representing and so since this is representing snow then we'll make it white and as you can see, I've done every bit of this so far with a paint marker. But it's so small, trying to do this with a brush would be cumbersome. It would really be difficult and test your patience major. So since those seem to be representing tie downs, let's do them, say, with a black. And it's just basically touching them. We'll just see how that goes. That don't look too shabby at all, guys. It really doesn't. I see a little spot that I missed with the marker. I wonder if you guys saw that. Did y'all see that? 
it's right there at that black too and I touched it while it was wet I should have waited but as you can see with these little green markers that is a good color it looks actually pretty cool on there even though it's very bright it still looks good but I think it would work nonetheless I'm gonna try maybe a little bit of mix in here and see what happens because if you take green and you take red they will make brown so let's just see now while that markers wet I'm not going to do the paint marker I'm going to use these little magic markers these little markers and while that's wet take and uh, go over that and see if we get brown because I have done this in the past and it worked and so if you do it with the red while the green is wet yep as you can see you are seeing the red but as soon as I hit it with the green and as you can see it's almost black looking I, don't, I hope you guys can see that it has that hue to it just always remember that green and red make brown and sometimes even black depending on how deep you go with it but as a cosmetologist uh, that you have a degree in chemistry and that is one of the little tricks that I am sharing with you guys. <laughs> I'm telling you my trade secrets. To offset green, you have to use red. That's how you get rid of it. So just sharing y'all's tidbits. So see how that turned brown? Isn't that cool? So just there's you something new that uh, maybe no one's shared with you. Maybe you learned something. You guys leave me some comments and definitely, you know, give me a thumbs up if I if you like my videos and I, and you learn anything. Uh, if I'm, you know, I, I hope that I'm giving you something worth watching and uh, that you you appreciate it and that that lets me know. And it, the more activity, the better the videos will rank and others will find them. So pretty much we have done our little camper here under a Christmas theme. And honestly, you guys, it's rather cute. And I am having to go back over that. So just know that every time I lean that thing up, I'm going to get this red and white pink effect. So I may just have to let that completely dry and go back over it. But just know that with the grain of the wood, that that is why that is happening. Okay, so we got to fix this right here. I tell you what, let's try this little tiny marker and do that little bit of bumper or fender. I'll get it right, guys. I'm so Southern. We just make up words. <laughs> this little fender well to go over his tire. And I find myself trying to talk more proper when I know I'm, when I'm videotaping. So that looks kind of cute right there. Okay, now it had a beauty ring, but where I blackened it, I am not even going there, guys. I'm just going to leave it, and he'll just have one single beauty ring, and we won't see the, the hub. We're just going to see the center here. And I'm doing that by just dabbing the point of this thing because it is so tiny. Okay. That is looking just darn cute. Really darn cute. Okay, so let's do this. Since this red is so powerful, let's do those little circles. Just kind of stick the marker in them. You could use those little markers I just used. And by the way, if any of you are Dollar Tree fans, let me get this right. In the kids' toy area, a lot of times you will see these little wooden things like airplanes and birdhouses and little things and they'll have uh at christmas they'll have snowmen and at thanksgiving they'll have turkeys and they'll have these markers in there and this is just something cool to have in your diy arsenal uh as you can see and i'm telling you these are quality markers guys i am not even kidding these are actually very quality markers to be in a child's little diy crafty thing and they give and give and give and i've already done projects with these little markers and their little chisel point stays really sharp 
Okay, I'm going to have to let that completely dry and stop running. So you can see it pretty good. It looks adorable. And I might even put uh, the year on there. Let's see if we can maybe... Um, uh, all right, on board with me doing Merry Christmas with the red. Because sometimes green can be overwhelming, especially when it's taking up that large of an object. So let's just try this in my own handwriting. And pray that I that I can get this thing to look right. So let's just try going slow. There we go. Okay, now let's try Christmas. All right, I'm having to use my pinky as a prop. Okay, that's not too bad. <laughs> it is kind of corny. Oh, that's cute though. I could go back over that. Now that I've kind of got my letters made and just make it a little deeper. How's that? Sometimes more is what you need. So I can, sometimes you can just make these letters look fancy and that helps the schematics of it a little bit. Let's see here. So it's looking a little bit better every time I go over it. And make it deeper. It's as dark as the. It gets as dark as the red paint. Keep doing it. Until you get it as deep. To where it looks right. And I, the corniness of it. I'm going to love. Because I think my friend. She would totally get a kick out of it. Uh, just for the corniness of it. I, I think she would really love this. Honestly. And, hold on. I'll be right back. Here we go, Sharpie marker to the rescue. Now this is the real fine points. Let's see what we accomplish here. I am going to put my initials on here. How's that? Cute, huh? <laughs> She's gonna love it. And I will go back over those and fix that white. But you guys, look how adorable. Is that not this cute, darn little thing? I think it's just cute because it's just got that, I don't know. <laughs> campers are lovely. You know, I just love my little campers. I have a thing for them. And I'm going to go back over that white and make it a little more intense. And uh, then that, that should show up more. And by then, maybe this will have quit bleeding and running. And uh, this over here just looks horrible with it and I know that my white could really use a new one so I guess I'm just gonna have to leave it guys but I think it looks adorable all right so well I'm gonna set that one aside and we're gonna move on to the next one now this is our bigger camper and this blue on this I don't know it, it might take me a while to to try and get through here with this blue but I think the color is really close as far as the blue that I have on my other campers. It really, really is close to the teal color, this blue. And as I said, these were these came out of the little uh, DIYs for kids, and they're just fantastic. I mean, they these are quality when, at markers. I mean, they, to be something that's in a dollar pack... And uh, just a little kid's thing. These suckers really give out the fluid. I mean, they're they're exceptional. And I've paid top dollar for markers. I mean, these paint markers right here, like this paint marker, I got this one at Dollar General. And you will still pay two and a half, three dollars for that. And then each one of these are over three dollars a piece. And then when you buy the pack of these Sharpie markers, they're twelve ninety nine for four of them in a pack, and uh, you get black, red, yellow, and blue, um, or you in white. So you get five in a pack, and they're twelve ninety nine, and that's at Walmart or Target. I saw them tonight at Target, and they're twelve ninety nine. So as I'm going right here on this line. So that means I need to take my card. And line that up. Just lay it right there. And know that that is as high as it goes 
on that side. And so I just eyeballing it, I did pretty darn good. Just a little bit more. And voila, I've got it. So now I can fill that in and move to the other side. And then I'm going downward over here simply because I don't want a light shadow. And the more you put on of this, as you can see, the bluer it gets. And it's actually really pretty. I mean, I like it. I'm very pleased with this blue. And this was part of the harvest because that yo-yo I did that had a Thanksgiving scene, it had a scarecrow on it. And uh, it was cute. It had a little bird. And so there it, the video is um, in my library of videos, if you guys want to check it out, where I was doing the yo-yo or the uh, DIY for children review. And like I said, you have the option to fast forward through this video and I will probably edit a lot of this where I'm doing the base coat because you get the idea and you see how I've done it, the technique I've used and uh, what way I'm going about it. So there's no need to make you suffer through it all. And since this up here is, I'm planning on it being white and then I'm going to show you, let me show you real quick. On the tires here on this one the way that they're done what you can do there is you can go ahead and do all of that black if you wanted to and um, make sure that you stay like go in that groove and uh, just it whatever goes over is fine it's not going to hurt a thing and then that way you just go ahead and do the whole thing as the tire because then that way it looks like the rest of the tires up under the fender well. And you can create a fender well on this if you wanted to. So just that groove, it was right there on that laser cut. Is open and hollow. and it, So it looks pretty good. Now let's go over here and check this little one. See how he looks. He is cute. What do you think? I turned his light on. He is cute, guys. I like him. So I'm going to turn his light off, set him aside, and we'll go back to the one we're doing. And uh, better lay him back down in case he's still wet. All right, so there again, we got this black. Now what I do is I will take this silver, and this, all I do is lay it against that wood and just go around it. Now, it is a very, very light hue that's going there, but it is enough to see that there's silver. And then that kind of makes it a hope, you know, like the beauty ring. And I will lay it right there and draw me a line, pretty much, if I can hold on to this little tiny marker. Line it up and just draw me a line. And it don't hurt to go through there real quick. Just make sure you don't go past it. So the door, of course, will be this color. And there again, if you need a guide, just lay your paper there in that groove and go all the way down. But then there's also this groove. So to make sure you don't go past it, you can lay your paper there and make sure. And I just, boy, I grazed it. Just grazed it. And then what's underneath that, you will paint the same as you would these. And then there again. Be consistent, just like you were coloring in a coloring book, too. Because if you don't, these little markers can get deeper in one part and lighter in another. But also bear in mind the wood. Some places of the wood will soak up faster than others. And so you may have a depth and uh, so really the only way to fix that is to go back over and give it another coat. Just like you were painting a wall, sometimes you'll see lighter places than you do others. And some places will be darker than others. So a lot of times you end up having to put two coats of paint on to make sure that there's no difference. That everything is ma uh, the same. 
and no light spots or dark spots. These are water markers, and so they they will uh, soak up faster, and they'll create little lines. You want to put curtains uh, on this? That would look adorable. I could actually probably take some of my paper and just make me a little paper canopy to go over that and it would look cute same over here I could put a paper canopy and just hang it over the window if I wanted to and so just like with the tire going inside of it just laying that silver on there it's just a dab of do kind of thing now this hitch we know is most likely black and then you got this whole frontal. So that's where you have to go, hmm, do I do that in white? Or do I do it in black? Or do I do it in silver? It's strictly up to you. So most of the time, the pole will be black and the hitch will be silver. Then again, sometimes they're all the same color. So what I'll do to give it some deviation is I will do the post black. And then this plate can be black or silver, really, there again, depending on what your trailer looks like. Uh, I, since I do have a silver marker here, I can transition pretty quickly. And that's why if you kind of have an idea of what you are going to do, or even if you don't, just put it all there where you can get to it. And then that way you have the option. It's not like you only have four crayons. On this, you can have as many crayons as you want so to speak you can have all your markers all your paints keep them local to you so see that that looks pretty good and guys dampen your paintbrush before you get started i have a little basin of water over here my paint bucket i hate to say bucket my paint basin that i wet my brush in and then I wipe that off. What that does is conditions those bristles and make sure that all of them are laying together, keeping them close. And that way they are picking up paint, not soaking up paint. The brush's job is to pick up paint and spread it evenly, not to soak it up. So by dampening your brush, you can get a more even, more consistent paint on there. And it's going to pick up the paint and not soak up the paint because you want the paint to be going on to your project not your brush you're not trying to paint the brush you're trying to use the brush to paint so that's just a fyi on there and then right here i'm just going to brush right by it. and sometimes you might have to make two or three passes to get it right where you want it just work your way up to it if you need to if you don't feel like you're gonna get it on that first pass just work up to it and then lay your brush down and then you can pull the difference and just stay slow and consistent just like that and voila you'll have it painted just like uh painting anything else you're just using smaller brushes it's the very same concept this pulling away from where you're going will keep you from messing up the work you've already done if you did get over well then you just have to paint over and fix it just don't get in no hurry and paint at it so to speak like i'm using the sharp end of my chisel to pull just like i were cutting in at a window when I were painting a wall, just you're going to cut it in and you're just going to drag and you're pushing the paint upward because you're going, you're trying to work up towards it and just don't overdo it. Just take it easy, take your time, pull, pull, add it. And then here again, paint at it. You know, 
push that paint up there until you get it right where you need it. And it, ta it might take you several passes, but you'll get it. Just take your time. Try not to push your luck, so to speak. Just take your time. Now, I have the majority of it out so that I can just kind of, I call it tickling. I just tickle at it. And my brush, this brush I picked up, I got some fraying on the edge. I'm sure y'all can see it in the camera because I can see it. Like I said, you could real easy put like some kind of paper border or even a little bit of scrap fabric over top of that and just dress it up and make it very personable. Marker again. And you could go right in that groove just like that was an actual door on a camper and just lay it in that groove because it's already a cut out of the wood and see that will just cheer that up and make it just look awesome and like this would be a front window then you could do this one because in these old campers they had metal windows all right so let's go back over our tire once again just setting that marker inside of that groove and voila we are done so you guys if you find that i have deleted and fast forwarded through a lot of the base paint it is because you didn't really have to see me do that it was just getting the idea of it and maybe seeing what you you know if you even want to take something like this on and uh, getting an idea of what it'd be like also uh, once again you can take and if you get one of these campers and look at it real close and see if it is doable that you can take and cut off the tree that was up here uh, let's turn her on oh ain't that the cutest thing you ever seen oh my goodness so you guys i hope you enjoyed this of course, I will sign this one, most likely. I'll use my little Sharpie, and I will put something on it. Like, I will probably, on ours, I will put our name, our little home away from home, and somewhere, you know, I don't care whether it's conspicuous or inconspicuous. I always put either my name or my initials. And that makes it unique. It lets me know when I did that, how long ago it was. And that way you give anything you paint a more personable. And uh, don't be ashamed of anything you ever paint, guys. And I'll tell you why. Over the years, I have... I've painted many, many things over the years. I'm talking a lot of stuff and different things. Large, small, teeny, tiny, and even this little teeny, weeny thing. Uh, I've done small and large. And the more you practice, the more you will improve. The more you will see a different way to go about it and get it done. And you, are, the great thing about painting is you never stop learning. You never stop learning something new. You can try something new you can do. And you will love it. It is absolutely one of the best therapies. Uh, people say, I don't have the patience to do that kind of stuff. Craft, crochet, knit. So, well, I want to tell you, DIY and crafting ain't for quitters and it ain't for the weak. It is not for the fee. It is just not. You have to be tough. And... Patience is the last thing you need when you do this. Most of the time, it takes a more hyper person, person who just, for whatever reason, they just constantly have to be in motion and do something and can't have idle hands. That's moi. I can talk 150 miles an hour. I need this to help me to release a lot of excess energy, and I'm able to relieve 
uh, that excess energy and actually sleep and rest. And it de-stresses me because I'm focused on something and I feel a sense of accomplishment, a sense of productivity. So it is not patience that it takes. It actually takes motivation to be to do DIY or to be creative or to do crafts and to do different things. It takes self-motivation. It takes a need to want to be creative. And when your creative side of your brain becomes open, it just overflows. And then you find yourself just looking for things to do. So trust me, if you're a patient person and you're easygoing, this works just as well to do because you can take your time, you can slow down, and you probably will teach somebody like me a thing or two. But trust me, being creative and doing crafts, it is definitely not for the weak. You have to be tough. <laughs> you have to be willing to accept, uh-oh, that was a flop. I did it wrong. Let me find a better way. And at the same time, accept things that may have not been perfect when you first done them. Because I assure you, if you keep going, you will go back and you will look and you'll go, my innocence then and my knowledge now, and you will just sandwich them together and you will start impressing yourself and be proud of yourself. Be proud of the worst thing you ever painted and be just as proud of it as you are the new things you paint. So always sign your work put your initials on it put the year on it because then you can go back and compare and see how well you've grown so let me get off my soapbox thank you guys for entertaining and listening to my philosophy on uh, self-growth and and uh coming along with me to paint these little adorable teeny weeny campers that i am loving and i certainly hope that my new subscriber she and I shared a moment on campers, and I hope she catches this video and enjoys it. Until the next DIY, if you're not a subscriber already, I certainly hope this persuades you to. And please share it with a family, a friend, someone who just likes DIYs, someone who enjoys watching DIYs. And if you do any of these projects, if you do a project, if you're working on something, I love to see things. So please tag me on Instagram. And if you're not part of my gang already, come over to the Facebook, Dandy Soap DIY. You'll see the link right there in the description down below. Click it and go over there and join the gang. We can talk to each other and chat beyond the comments on YouTube. And until the next DIY, you guys love yourself. Be proud of yourself. And just know that Elizabeth's out there rooting for you. Signing off. Elizabeth, see you in the next DIY.